I'd like the Scouts to please start our, us off with our Pledge of Allegiance. Scouts. Scouts, can you lead us off with our Pledge of Allegiance? Yes, sir. All those in uniform, please take the hand over your heart. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I'd like to thank everyone for attending. I'm glad to see a crowd here. I know a lot of you people were here in regards to the flooding that happened last week. Um, we certainly are aware of what happened. We all lived through it. It was a, a storm that certainly... Uh, come on in. I think someone quoted it as a 50-year storm. Um, so certainly we're going to talk about that tonight. So, uh, Seth, would you like to start with the roll call? Mr. Brennan. Here. Ms. Ms. Fry. Here. Mr. Hanna. Here. Mr. Ondo. Here. Mr. Stein, please let us know that he will not be here. Mr. Vodidian. Here. Mr. Youngkin. Here. Mr. Paul. Here. Okay, um, President of Council. I'll just reiterate, I, I did travel through the borough after the flooding, and it was certainly a mess. It was not in just confined to one area, it was throughout the boroughs. And certainly, um, the residents were hit very hard, the whole town was hit very hard actually. Um, our heart goes out to the people that were flooded. We certainly have tried to help uh, in our efforts to try and help ease the pain somewhat. There is no easing pain when your home is flooded, we know that. I certainly know that. I, I work through it all the time. Um, that being said, I'm sure we're going to hear from your residents. Um, I'm going to pass on to the mayor. Mayor, do you have anything you'd like to say? Uh, I would start out with something uh, for the good. We have a couple proclamations we'd like to give the scouts first. <coughs> sure, certainly. Okay, uh, we will have, let's see, who would I have up here first? This one is David Packer. David, can you come up here? Okay, yeah, let's go to the center here. <coughs> whereas, the borough of, whereas the borough of Munhall, a place for families in the heart of the Snow Valley, takes pride in the sense of community and civilian involvement, and whereas the vision of the Boy Scouts of America is to prepare every eligible youth in America to become a responsible, participating citizen and leaders who are guided by the Scout Oath and Law. And whereas the Boy Scouts of America encourage Eagle Scout candidates to complete worthy projects to improve their neighborhoods, their community, and the region. And whereas David Packer is a rising senior at Still Valley High School, a recent inductee to the Still Valley National Honor Society, a member of the swim team and track teams. And whereas David has continually been active in scouts since he was six years old, earning the arrow of light as a Cub Scout, currently the senior patrol leader in the troop and a member of the Order of the Arrow. Whereas after review of his project by the Eagle Scout Board of Review, David will receive the rank of Eagle Scout. And whereas for his community service project, David planned, organized, and worked to refurbish the Veterans Memorial on Longfellow Drive at no cost to the borough. And whereas David plans to pursue a career in carpentry, which is one reason why he chose this project. Whereas this is the highest award a scout can receive, only about 8% of the individuals move up through the ranks of scouting to attain the rank of Eagle. And whereas David has grown into a well-respected young man that both scouts and adults can look at to as an example. Now therefore, be resolved in, in I, Rob Falls, Mayor of Munhall, do hereby honor David Packer of Munhall, Boy Scouts America Troop Corps, on his achievement attending the rank of Eagle Scout, the highest rank by the Boy Scouts. Congratulations, David. Miles Lucky, we have Eagle Scouts that do these projects, and you know we have him that he, David did the thing with the Veterans Memorial. The next one we're bring up has done a dog park. If you don't know about there's a dog park now, down by Number One Fire Hall. It's really nice, gated in, done a great job, and I'm going to bring him up next. David, thank you. 
as a place for families in the heart of the Steel Valley takes pride in a sense of community and citizens' involvement. And whereas the vision of the Boy Scouts of America is to prepare every eligible youth in America to become responsible participating citizens and leaders who are guided by the Scout Oath and Law. Whereas the Boy Scouts of America encourage Eagle Scout candidates to complete worthy projects to improve their neighborhoods and their community and the region as a whole. Whereas Nathan Collins is a senior at Steel Valley High School, a recent inductee to the Steel Valley National Honor Society and a member of the Art Club. Whereas Nathan is currently in the Building Trades Maintenance Program at Steel Center of Otec. Nathan has worked the past two summers cutting grass at the Homestead Cemetery. Thank you, Nathan, for doing that. And I'm sure everybody here, you know, that has anybody there appreciates and thanks for everything you've done there. Whereas Nathan is also a dog lover and has three dogs, Jenny, Rusty, and Hank. Nathan chose this project because of his love for the dogs. Upon completion of the project, he has fulfilled all the requirements and has been applied to be awarded the rank of Eagle Scout. He is hoping that once his application is approved, that he will be awarded the rank sometime in September. Whereas Nathan has been involved in scouting for 11 years, he was a scout, Cub Scout in Pack 4 from 2011 to 2016, when he earned the highest rank in Cub Scouting, the Arrow of Light. He joined the Boy Scout Troop 4 in May of 2016 and worked hard to advance to the rank of Life Scout. Upon completion of the project, he will have completed all his requirements to earn the rank of Eagle Scout. Whereas Nathan has held the position of chaplain in the troop, leading the Scouts to remember their religious beliefs. Nathan has grown to a well-respected young man and is, and is respected by both Scouts and adults alike and can be looked upon as an example for our community. Whereas the Scouting Awards Nathan has earned in 2022, became a member of the Boy Scout National Honor Society. The Order of the Arrow, BSA EPA Award, 2021. BSA Award Conservation Award, 2021. National Scouting Award. He has completed 33 merit badges and different skills and activities. Only 21 are required for the Eagle Scout. Therefore, it resolved to me that I, Rob Falls, Mayor of Munhall, do hereby honor Nathan Collins of Munhall, Boy Scouts of America, Troop 4, on his achievement of attaining the rank of Eagle Scout, the highest rank in the Scouts. So, um, I'd like to go directly to um, motion number 15, and I believe that is for uh, the salary and approval of the assistant chief position. Um, so, would you like to read that? Can we? Do I? Do I? Do I have to ask for uh, uh, any any comments from council or a motion? I would. I'd like to. I need a motion. I guess first for number 15, council. On okay. motion. And then any questions on the motion from the public? What is the amount? What is the salary? It's 105,255. I think the effective date, council, should be? When you started performing the duties. Yes. Was that last week? 
Two weeks ago, Chief? No. Two weeks ago. Two weeks ago. So, Mr. President, if I can say, we need a motion to approve that salary amount with the effective date in a second, but before it's voted on, because we're taking this out of order, we'll have to allow the public to make any comments or questions on this individual motion because we haven't gotten to that part of the meeting yet. Correct. Then we'll vote. I'll make the motion. Second. Any public comment? No? Okay. So we have a first and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Assistant Chief Caterina, would you please come up and be sworn in? Mayor, what do you mean? You know, I was looking around for versions. There's just some long versions, but we got the short one. I called the president of the Mayor's Association. He gave me a really long one. I'd like to read it someday. You won't see it in a while. I'm very long. Yeah. Okay, this is the short version. This is the short version. Hi, state your name. Hi, Jamie Caterina. Appointed as <coughs> appointed as assistant chief. Assistant chief to the chief of police for the borough of Munhall. To the chief of police for the borough of Munhall. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear that I will support and defend support and defend the Constitution of Pennsylvania. The Constitution of Pennsylvania and the Constitution of the United States of America. And the Constitution of the. United States of America, United States of America. <laughs> and the bylaws of the borough of Munhall. And the bylaws of the borough of Munhall. I swear, I solemnly swear, I solemnly swear to discharge the duties of my office, to, to discharge the duties of my office with fidelity. With fidelity. Okay, sworn in, subscribed before me, the 16th day of August, 2022, signed by myself, Robert Falls, and President of Council Rick Brennan. Congratulations, Assistant Chief. <laughs> Thing. Can I say a couple words Absolutely. real quick? First of all, I'd like to thank my family and friends for being here. Uh, special thanks to three of my former chiefs of police, the current magistrate, Pat Campbell, Chief DC, retired West Homestead chief, and Chief DiBartolo, Frank DiBartolo. Those three are a big part of where I'm at today. Thank you very much. Oh. <laughs> where did that come from? <laughs> and I'd really like to thank my wife for putting up with me. <laughs> All these years doing this work, not being home. Um, and thank the people here in my hall. And I want this appointment. And I want to give a special thanks to Rick Brennan, uh, who let me wear his father's badge. He was our former chief and assistant chief at one time because my uniform was worn in, didn't have no badge, so I really appreciate that. No I'm honored to wear it. Good luck, chief. Thank you very much. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Mayor, Mayor, you can have the floor again. Um, and we'll have to give you back because I know you have announcements and other things that you'd like to speak. Um, one more quick announcement I want to mention is uh, the young lady sitting next to me, Bree Francis, is our high school advisory on the high school advisory board to the president, the council, the council of the mayor, the mayor's use advisory board, and she has completed. Volunteer services more than is required. She has over 250 hours of volunteer services in the community, and 34 here, just in the borough of with the mayors and the council coming to these meetings and just getting involved. So I want to thank Bree. She's done a great job. <laughs> Put her in a position uh, to be on the uh, SAD National Committee for SAD. 
It, it's, it's, <laughs> um, the official title for it is the Presidential Volunteer Service Award. Um, it, this is the gold level, and it's awarded to individuals who have completed 250 or more hours of community service in a year, all documented with letters like corroborating your hour log. Um, yeah, so in September of last year, too, about two weeks ago, I have 253 hours of community service. Um, yeah, our mayor was nice enough to write me a letter and recommend me to SAD National for that. So that will be presented to me at the uh, SAD at the Pennsylvania SAD conference, which I'm also the chairman of planning. So yeah. And this is probably our first that uh, we started a new thing, Love Health Care Zone. She's our first high school member on the Love Health Care Committee, which is committee. And right now we're looking at setting up a community day in October. We're at our, our community today. Look at the move of location. I'm uh, checking on some new locations for it this year. So uh, look forward to that. And uh, community cares is off and running as a good group in this borough. We had a community last week in attendance. Probably about 25 people from the borough came out for that. And uh, the flooding, you know, I'm sorry to hear about all the flooding. I was out, saw a lot of it too. And, uh, you know, I, I mean, you know, the borough, I think, is looking for things that they can do to help the residents in this borough. You know, uh, I know cost is, of course, a problem. There's not a lot of, you know, doing sore work is expensive work. But, of course, we're trying to keep them updated as best as we can and clean with them. Sure, that's the borough's going to do that. I will prefer to this. Okay. Later. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, next is our solicitor, solicitor's report. Yeah, thank you, Mr. President. Just a few brief items. Um, the, I did prepare and complete the memorandum of understanding uh, because the current collective bargaining agreement with the police didn't, didn't officially acknowledge the assistant chief uh, position because it had been unfulfilled recently, unfilled. And uh, so now I work with the union, we've made some changes, and that's been signed by the police union. So that will be voted on tonight to approve. So everything will be in place with regard to the new assistant chief position. Um, I also reviewed some various documents uh, at the request of our manager. Uh, one was a request for proposal RFP for janitorial services for this building to so try to get some clothes to have this place cleaned properly and also uh, a sports field rental agreement. Uh, those are just the primary things uh, that are in front of me. And that concludes me. Thank you. Borough Manager. Uh, Council has uh, my report of activities at, at this point. Um, in my tenure, really all I can give you other than the progress that you see is a list of the meetings and activities um, that have been going on. Uh, primarily uh, working on the fiscal pieces. Uh, with the Finance Committee, uh, we, did, we did have a change in personnel in our accounting firm, so I've uh, been working on getting up to speed with them. Did quite a bit of work uh, getting 1850 West um, up on the auction blocks, uh, doing tours with potential uh, purchasers. Uh, the other day I had the pleasure of actually meeting with uh, the Homestead and West Homestead managers so that we can start uh, working together. Uh, building relationships there, uh, and digging into uh, Parks and Rec. We had a committee meeting to uh, look at so we can move forward with the PCNR grant. Otherwise, I have been working on uh, drafting the RFP that the solicitors reviewed, uh, drafting a job description uh, that I hope to get posted later this week. Uh, we were interviewing candidates for the W position, um, working with the civil service exam for, or civil service position that the exam stays, so he's been very busy. He's been very busy. I have one question for you, looking through your report about Dixon Street and Greenway. Can that, you? That's that's the uh, that's the report from Mark Green. Mark Green. So I'll take that. Um, I can answer that. I'm, I'm just concerned because that alley is in such poor condition. It's, it's really bad. Mm -hmm. And I'm just wondering, you know, I see it on here. And I'm, I, I, I know I'm reading.
reading about grants and other things, but um, can you elaborate on that at, at all? That's something that prior to my arrival was identified as a priority item to work to apply for grants. So okay. at this point, uh, the next set of grants is for, for Dixon Street, uh, we may be able to apply through CDG funds for the alleyway, or if it encompasses the alleyway, that cannot go through the standard federal grant alleyway. Can, can we do anything with the alleyway ourselves without a grant? Do we have do we have a public works crew that could get on there and do something with the alley down there? Because I've gotten calls myself about certain areas down there of that street. And if public works could go down there and address anything in that alley <coughs> back there would be would be helpful. Yeah, we'll do Okay, thank you. All right, I'm sorry. Sorry to elaborate on that. <clears throat> Borough Engineer. Thank you, uh, Mr. President. Um, so, a couple things to report on. Um, the paving work for Raven Bodner Way, um, our multimodal grant, is scheduled to start uh, sometime after Labor Day. That was awarded in July to Jay Caruso. So, we're going to be working with him and um, we can have to have some conversations about parking probably out front for the September meeting because it's likely. Construction is going to be underway, so okay. we'll have to have some more notice. Um, item um, uh, two. Uh, the only other thing that really uh, for, for me to report on is uh, you know we're aware of the flooding that occurred on August the fifth. Uh, we reviewed the issues. Uh, with the borough and the public works department. I personally went out and reviewed the issues myself. Uh, we're looking into uh, to root causes and potential solutions uh, moving forward. And I uh, just want to reiterate what has already been said, uh, that it was a 50-year storm. Um, we got um, you know, 50 cubic rain, uh, 50 cubic feet of rain per second. Um, it just overwhelmed uh, the existing infrastructure. Uh, we're aware of it. We'll be looking into uh, what we can do moving forward. So, did you receive the report from the fire department? Because he has a thorough breakdown of what what, what happened. I I see it here, and I'm going to talk to Ed afterwards. Right, thank you. And we want to make sure you got that to read that. We'll email it to you. Thank you, Ed. Yep. Anything else? That's all I have. Thank you. <clears throat> Public Works uh, Chair Supervisor. All I have is we got a lot of storm damage. Uh, I'm very short on people, so it's going to take me a couple weeks to come out. Okay, thank you. I know that you were you were called out because I called you out mm -hmm. on the night of the storm. He did send the crews out and clean Shady up, and I don't know where else you were were that night. So yeah, um, basically there that night, but all over town are clean up. I just don't have the people right. I thank you, and I thank Public Works for. Uh, for all the work that you guys have done in that, in that effort as well. We got uh, Shady Avenue paved that part. Pardon me? We got that part of Shady Avenue paved that was all tore up. You did do that? Uh, we saw it out. Awesome. When's that going to be done or is it it's done? It's done. Wow, I haven't been up there. I drove up there today. I didn't even, didn't even notice. <laughs> That's terrible. Okay. Um, awesome. Good job. Chief of Police. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, the police department answered 754 calls of service for the month, made 17 arrests, issued five non-traffic citations, and issued eight traffic citations. And our canine unit completed training and certified, and will be on a, uh, we'll be starting patrolling the borough soon, as soon as the vehicle is completed. That's all I have. And he's back on duty again. He's still not on duty. Hopefully next week. That would be great. Thank you, Chief. <coughs> Fire Chief. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, in the month of July, the Mono Bureau of Fire responded to 46 emergencies. This is, um, and I won't be reporting on the flooding if you're ready for that, but that happened in August. But uh, four of those were actual structure fires. Um, we had no injuries, which is the key uh, key statistic, no injuries for the month. Um, we still remain pretty, remain, remain pretty strong in our response. We show up in about five, five and a half minutes to your house after dispatch. We put in a total of about 1,100, a little better, 1,100 man hours. 
Um, nine of our alarms were false, and then we were aided by other companies for one, man, one, one way or another six or seven times in the month. Um, does anybody have any questions for the fire department? I, um, I can't let you get off that easy, Chief. Okay. So, I have a special thanks to the fire department. You guys were, worked above and beyond call of duty on the, the night of the flood. And we thank you, the council thank you, the citizens thank you, the people here thank you. We can't thank you enough. I, I appreciate you saying that. We do the best we can. You know, we're trained firefighters. There's some emergencies we do the best we can. Tim, I, I thank you and the Homestead Fire Department. They aided us as well. So, um, just for the record, um, it's not in the report. We responded to and actually visited approximately 40 homes on the 5th. 14 of those homes required actual intervention of some type, being pumped on yes, and utilities. And I, I'm reading the report. He had. I asked him at the meeting, prior meeting, the workshop, to give me a report. And he has a he has a report, and it's pretty intense. And there's A, B, C. That was difficult to do because the cat the cat sheet was all bundled together. So I, I had, it took me a while to put it together. So I apologize. I didn't get this. Well, I mean, it's everywhere, and, 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 and it's just like you said, it's, it was all throughout the borough, West Front Road, Ravine Street, Creek Street area, Emerson, Troutman. Um, he, he has a complete list of stuff here. Um, another person we need to thank is Daryl Hunt. Are you here, Daryl Hunt? Is he here? There he is. Thank you, Daryl, for your emergency coordination. Um, we do appreciate you being out there. He's been out, when I was mayor, he was out in the middle of the night, storms, floods, rains, fires, mudslides. He's there, he's an, uns uh, uh, an unsuspecting person that you never know, is the back door, he's coordinating. Thank you very much. The unsung hero of Munhall. I would just like to say to everybody, please remember, God bless our firemen, they are volunteers. They're volunteers, and as the old saying goes, they're running in when everybody else is running out. And Chief, they work you have something else you'd like to say? Yeah, I, I mentioned, I think, I'm not sure if I put it in here or not, but I wanted to thank Bicey too, because I called Bicey and said, I need you up here right away. And um, the street department was up there with barriers, like 15 minutes after I called him. And then I called him back afterwards. It's time for you to come on. And he, his, he had a crew up there that night. Yep. Up, he up he came after you called Thanks, the second time around as well. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, <clears throat> code enforcement? Uh, you have a copy of my report. The only thing I have to add is on August 25th at 6.30 p.m., um, the zone hearing board will have a hearing for a side yard variance on, at 118 West Edna Street. Uh, the gentleman's trying to build a two-car garage at Encringent on 5 foot So they'll be beat me in here at 6.30 p.m. Okay. Includes my report. Thank you. <clears throat> Finance chair. All right. Um, Right now, we're tracking about $6.4 million in revenue coming in to the end of the year with about $6.3 million in expenses, which gives us about $100,000 in reserves, which is not a lot. Uh, we, are, we have a motion tonight for $1,850, which was you know, unexpected potential revenue that the council will uh, vote on. Uh, the greatest risk that we have is receiving a million dollars grant for the building, which it won't be a million, it'll be something less than that. And Seth can comment right there, but we're working very diligently to get all the steel certs and all the, you know, the eyes dotted and the crease piece across so we can get that money coming in the door. Um, budgeting process will start uh, first half of September. Um, you know, there'll be finance committee meetings obviously uh, with all the departments itself will be a draft budget in November and we'll adopt the budget at the December 20th meeting of this year. Uh, other big things <coughs> we have, we have the audits going on right now and then I'm sure we will have our bond rating once again discussion. 
probably in the new year, I'm thinking the first quarter. So the key, key thing is that we don't run at a deficit and we run positive. Because uh, last year we did run at a small deficit. So those are the major things. Thank you, Mr. Hanna. Is anyone here from the sewer authority? Rick Jack is in the hospital. Pardon me? Jack is not in the hospital. Oh, boy. Okay, um, we need approval for the uh, meeting minutes in July 2019. Sorry, that was a typo on there. Yeah, that's correct. That would be 2022. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know if we were backlogged that. <laughs> no, we were not backlogged that. <laughs> <laughs> the, the actual minutes do say 22 on them. Very good. <laughs> mm. So, can I get a motion for this? Motion. Motion. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any nays? No nays. Okay, do we have any speakers that are on the agenda? We have none. Uh, public comment? Any like, anyone like to speak? Yeah. Certainly come up to the podium and give us your name. Is that necessary? <laughs> I think they all, they, they make it necessary. Well, first of all, I want to thank you for the time to speak. My name is John Thomas. I reside at 318 Tioga. I'm here today to uh, discuss a private drive, quote unquote, between uh, Tioga and, and Mercer. And you're probably already aware of this, but there's been rejections, rejections by insurance companies due to the storm by for not maintaining proper sewer cleaning out. Uh, at the end of our drive is a storm sewer, and there's three or four people that uh, had damage, and the insurance companies come on and said if the storm sewer would have been properly maintained, they wouldn't have had a problem. I've never in 12 years seen a borough truck on property, okay? So much for that. <laughs> uh, the other thing is, <laughs> I was told years ago that this is supposedly a private drive. <clears throat> well, I think private drives have to be re-looked at. I have pictures, actually the sewer authority was supposed to take all the pictures of the damage of this private drive. And I have them here to pass out because of the fact that uh, Allegheny County's property line, uh, dot com, shows actually property lines going from my property all the way up to the person across from me's driveway. In other words, I own the whole, supposedly the whole, you know, drive, which is ridiculous. I mean, it doesn't even make any sense. And, <laughs> Another thing that has to be looked at about these private drives in terms of maintenance. We have one lady that owns a house that's never there. She resides in Florida. She bought it for an investment purpose, so she has no interest in doing anything. We have another uh, resident that's been passed away for five years, and the place has been empty. So, uh, of course, nobody's interested in helping that in that area. Next door to me is a resident home for uh, the mentally challenged, and that's a private business. They have no interest in you know, contributing or anything of that nature. And the damage that's been done to this private drive, I'm not an as asphalt contractor, but I would guess it's probably 40, 50,000 to do the, the entire drive, mm -hmm. <laughs> and you can't, Again, you can't, uh, we can see the pictures, if you didn't, if you got the text. But you can't just uh, hot patch, you know, uh, a pothole if all the surrounding is all cracked and loose. I mean, it's just, it's in, it would just be worse out the next rank. I mean, it would just be a waste of money. So, <laughs> those points being <clears throat> said at this time, I think City Council needs to review this uh, idea of 
private, you know, private ways or whatever, you know, roads or whatever you want to call it. Because I know that there's other other places in the in the borough that actually have names. Ways runs Ross <laughs> Ross Way, for an example, and it's not even used. It's it's uh, to the point that people cut their grass, their lawn. The, the grass is nicer than my lawn. So needless to say, the borough's never been on that piece of property for God knows how many years. And uh, <laughs> there's other friends here and, and residents of the of this. Uh, Which house do you live in? 318 Tioga. So you're next to Mr. D. Basilio? He's about three or four up from me on down this side. Okay. <laughs> and the <clears throat> uh, gentleman next to his place that isn't here today, when the storm, I mean, I'm not, you know, there's a lot of damage done. I'm, I'm aware of that. But again, from what I've been told, and that if the sewer's not been maintained properly, and his old, he has an in ground pool. Well, I was flooded with asphalt and dirt and whatever. So, and of course, he had to take care of the cost to, you know, to do that clean up. But again, uh, the point I want to stress the most is these private drives. Uh, the drive I'm talking about has to be, no exaggeration, over 100 yards long. I'm familiar with the driveway. So, <laughs> and it's in really, really bad shape. There's no way that you know, you know, who has to live there can, can afford to have it fixed. And plus the fact that, like I said, you'll see I have copies for you. Where Allegheny County came up to say that I own all the way up to the guy's end of his driveway. And that's everybody on Tioga's side. Mercer, <laughs> and these where these gentlemen live. So you're, they're saying that Tioga Street owns the driveways? And, totally. And the, and the, uh, the, the street, was it? Mercer, Mercer Street Mercer. does not own them. Oh, yeah. But there, are homes that have, there. there are homes there that have driveway access further up you go. On Mercer. On the Mercer. Oh, side. sure. Yeah, they use it just as much as I do. If I can just clarify on that, if you're looking at the county assessment website, yeah. that's an estimated overlay that is not a legal mapping by any means. Okay, well, it actually changes year to year because it's an overlay on top of an image of the earth. So those lines are, are not legal lines by any means, and they are they are absolute estimates. All right. Well, so I, yeah. I understand. Good. I was going to put up a so you can't get out of I understand your pain. Um, I I uh, had a home on a private drive, and my father's home was on a private drive, and you get nothing. You get nothing from the borough. They don't pave. They don't salt. They don't take maintain anything there. Um, that's a hard issue to, to, to discuss and talk about well, because it's again, private. You know, there's private. people on the on the drive that aren't you know don't live there or dead you know. I understand that you know, and some of them are financially not able to contribute. I mean, I had uh, had a, well, four of us had it coded a few years back. I know that. And after all those people, you know, we got four people that participated. You know, to have you know, so. Is this the is this the um, the drain that backed up and flooded your house? There's a public storm sewer down that alley. Is it a public storm sewer? Yes, I already been had to verify. Here is yeah. is that right, Bob? Okay. Here's a picture of the storm sewer. This is at the very bottom. The very bottom. There is the numerous pictures here of the damage. It's it was relocated when Judge McLean built his house at my end. There's a storm uh, cat basin on my property. I'm sorry. It was relocated when Judge McLean built the house. So it comes down the, the alley, cuts across the back of my property. There's a huge manhole about 12 feet deep, and then it runs down the side of my yard. Okay. Well, all I can say, I think our public works guy should take a look at it. I don't know if, if indeed it's private or if it's ours. Um, well, if, it, if, it, if you classify the drive as private. I understand. I understand. Yeah, I don't think you expect me to get down there and clean out a sewer. I mean, and that's what they're saying. It, it was, you know, that's what caused the problem. That's why they wouldn't pay the claims. <laughs> I, I believe it. I mean, I, I don't know. But I think, yeah, I don't know. In, 
what could be changed or kind of help. Or, but you know, it's impossible to maintain it. All I can drive. all I can say is I think we should send our public works <clears throat> director down there and take a look at the at the, at the catch phase. And the alley is another question. All all in in total, you know. I think to maintain or take a private road or alley to a public, it has to have certain dimensions. It has to meet a certain criteria of, as far as width and whatnot. Well, so, I'd like to know why it was ever, you know, designated as a private drive. I mean, there are so many private drives through the borough. It's, yeah. it's, 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 we don't have enough time to talk about it. <laughs> Honestly, we don't. And I understand your empathy. I, I empathize with you. You're, you have problems. I'm going to send Bob down there to check this out and see if we can clean it out any better for you. That's about all I can do about that. As far as paving the alley, I don't see that happening from the borough's point of view anyway. I think I think it would be very, um, it would open up a can of worms for 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 something like that. To be honest with you, because I mean, well, for an example, these two individuals sitting here. They live right across from another, and they got estimates. Um, you know, but about hundred thousand dollars. But if we put it down with the road being broken up above it, this could break everything we do. I understand. It, everyone needs to be involved in it. It needs to yeah. be. What I think you ought to do, and I'm, and, I, and we're going to move on to the meeting. I think you should form <coughs> some sort of an agreement with everyone involved there, and maybe in your deeds there is an agreement on that already. I would check your deeds and see if you have an agreement in that area on the alley because it should be written in there uh -huh. i would check that could the borough possibly research whether that alley was ever vacated i'm sure we can look somehow or another into that i don't know if we have records into that thing but i don't think it was ever designated as an alley i think it was it was cut up that way when they were built and, and made that way because i know that jack spellman lived there forever he built the home and i was there for 55 years I've been going down that alley, and I know it was a private alley back then, always. But it's funny why, at the very end where that storm sewer is, I know that. There's, there's actually a curb, like a six inch curb, mm -hmm. but the guy next door has been there for 40 you know, something years. The Downses, I think, believe live there. So, I mean, it don't make any sense that you'd have a private driver who would stop right before his house. I mean, that, you know. His yard goes through back there, if I remember correctly. Yeah, it goes all the way to the back. All right, it does. So. Well, thank you for your time. Thank you for coming. And and and, and I will speak with our <coughs> engineer and ask him what he finds out there, because we certainly, if we can at least come down and check it out and see if we can clean it out any better, it wouldn't. It's not a not a big skin off our teeth to come down and help you do that. Can right. we do something with you, Alan? I don't think we can do that. I'm going to get to research and see if it's private or is it. No, we can't. We can't spend public tax dollars on private property. Because there are other, there are other people that would it's like to legal. see Morgan's Lane paved yeah. where I used no. to have a home, and mm -hmm. it's it's a private drive, and we can help. We can help them, but we can't do that. I don't think. We can look into research on that as well as what was done back then. But I I know as long as I've been alive that that alley has been a private drive back there. So we'll look into it though. If we can find anything. We will. We can pass that picture around as well. Anyone else? Come on and speak up. Hi, I'm Debbie Schaefer. I live on the corner of Chapman and Emerson Street. Um, you probably know what I'm going to talk about. I'm going to talk about the flood. I've been in that house since 1993, and I've probably been flooded, I don't even, I don't know how many times. Um, in the last five years, I've had to replace all my appliances in my basement. Um, there, we recently just had paid, my husband and I paid, uh, $11,000 to have sump pumps and French drains put in our basement and with this storm it did nothing. What they told us was it's because the sewer lines are so bad down there that it can't take the water down fast enough. So everything was coming in to my basement. Um, I had probably 
three feet, three feet of water in my <clears throat> front part of my basement. Um, the fire department did come, thank you. They checked before I even had the call. Um, they didn't pump me out because I do have the sump pumps. But I just, you know, I've heard different things I can do. I can get a backflow water valve um, at my cost, part of the sewer authority pays part of it. I pay part of it. Um, the process to get that done is ridiculous. Um, I'm told I have to get three estimates from different plumbing companies that will give me the estimate for the pump, uh, the, the valve, and then also someone to do dye testing. Um, the sewer authority requires both of those estimates from you know three different companies before they decide if they can go ahead and do that for me. Um, I know my neighbor, I don't know if he, there he is, uh, my neighbor across the street um, had the backwater um, flap valve put in, and you got no water this time, right? Uh, only three inches. Okay. As compared to last time when you're washing dry, we're banging off the ceiling. off the rafters. Right. Um, it's, you know, you're saying you told this gentleman, and I, and I understand you can't use pub, tax, taxpayers' money for private, but this is not a private issue. This is a taxpayer issue. This is a borough issue. Those pipes are bad. I don't know. My house is getting ready to go on the market. I can't put my house on the market right now. I have to disclose all that. So what do I do? Or what are you going to do? Anybody? If I understand you correctly, I mean, You're her husband. this is a sanitary sewer issue. Oh, well, that's a whole other issue. The, the manhole cover blew off the intersection of Troutman and Emerson. Water was shooting up. The manhole cover blew up. It was in pieces. It was sewage. Yeah. It was sewage down there. That's a health hazard. That is a health issue. And also, I see in here you're going to spend $428,000 on Vine Street and Troutman Street playgrounds. You have a public safety issue because that sewage has just gone over those playgrounds. You have kids right now playing baseball. Right now. And there's sewage all through that playground. People go there every day. And all do the same thing there. So this, there should be something in there to fix this issue because it is a public safety issue. It's not just a couple people. People go there. Certainly. That's a good point. So is there any plan or anything? Like, does, I know it's no one from the sewer authorities here. No. But is there, I know it's not an easy, not so, an easy fix. So, it's probably going to be an expensive fix, but it, so can I, can I just say one thing to this whole, whole issue? It's not only a sewer issue, it's a rain issue. So when it rains, when you get four inches of rain in half an hour, you have a problem. No sores anywhere are going to handle that. And I understand, you know, I, I don't know the influx of why and how so much water gets into the sanitary sewer. And if indeed it was a sanitary sewer that blew off, that's, that's a question. It probably was. I'm not arguing the fact that the manhole blew off. Whether it was a storm sewer or a sanitary sewer, I think it was a sanitary sewer, actually, that right there, because I've worked on, on all the streets and all the sewer lines as well. And Bob, if, did you replace the manhole there, or did, did the sewer authority do that? No, we replaced it. Was it a sewer? <clears throat> was it a sanitary sewer? I think it was sanitary, yeah. So it was a sanitary source. I'm not arguing that with you. No, I know. I know. It should, in, in essence, there should be no, no rainwater going into a sanitary source. Mm -hmm. But obviously that's not the case because it blew right off. So. Well, that whole area and, anyways is full of water under my house. Like my, I don't know what's down there, but I, you, <clears> my plumber, you've been to the house. We had some pumps put in. The sump pump in the front never stops. I mean, it just gushes water. Even when it's not raining, when there's no rain on the driest 
time that we had, that that thing never quit. There are springs. Where's that water coming spring, from? There are natural yeah, springs know. that run through there. That, you know that 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 happens, and and the same thing with Shady Avenue. Shady Avenue, they said the manhole blew off there as well. I got reports of that, and I know several homes, several homes on Caroline Street, several homes on Caroline Street. That not even on shady had sewage back up into their homes as well through the through the through the sewer line. So, you know, I don't know what the answer is. Um, you know. Do you want to buy my house, anybody? I think I think the mayor will be interested. I'll tell you what you do: buy it, tear it down, put in a parking lot for the ball field because parking is a whole other issue that I can go off on right now. Down there, so. Well, I kind of I have the same issue with my house. Uh, so I put a sump pump in, I put a sump pump in, and it runs constantly too. And uh, they told me, this was years ago yet, and they told me there's a spring underneath my house. Well, I think your problem is a little more than a spring. My so, problem, yeah. The engineer is looking at the areas, uh, he, if you heard him speak earlier, and I can, I'm just going to refer to you if you'd like to comment and get in on this conversation a little bit. We don't, just, we, we all know what's going on. Right. Yeah. Right. I mean, obviously, it was a, you know, a very a one in, once every 50 year storm. It wasn't a once in a storm. Yeah. 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 You're going by, you're going by statistic right numbers that are on paper. We're not going to be out of order today. Okay. We're going to let the speaker speak. If you would like to say something, come up and speak. We're not interrupting people, we're speaking. Just to comment anecdotally, on, like if, if your neighbor said you, that he had a backflow, a backflow preventer is going to stop water from the sanitary no, sewer line. No, he didn't say that. He didn't say that it would stop it. So a backflow preventer stops water from backing up the sanitary sewer line into your drains in your basement. So if he had one put in and he got three inches of water in his basement. I mean, it would indicate to me that a lot of your water is backing up through the drains, you know, for, from the sanitary sewer as opposed to getting in through like overland flight. So a backflow preventer probably could help your issue. But I'm just saying that anecdote, I, I don't no, know specifically. I, I, I don't agree. I mean, I agree with you. I think yeah. it would help. It, it might, it would help until it doesn't help. They're, yeah. they're not foolproof. So that's They're putting a band-aid on this humongous problem mm -hmm. that I've been dealing with the borough for years that we're looking into it, we're, we're, we're trying to figure it out, you know, we're working on it. S specifically, the problem that you're having sounds like it's more related to the sanitary sewer than to a, to the, to a borough storm sewer. I, again, I'm just, I don't know specifically all the details of your situation, just speaking anecdotally about what you said and what I heard your neighbor say. Okay, so is there a plan? Well, a plan would be to, to work with the sanitary uh, authority, the, the, the sanitary sewer authority for, for you know, their backflow pre preventer installation program. They have a re you know, reimbursement. I think they cover right, 90%. I, I talked to them already. I, they're making me, that's why I said, they're at, they've asked me to get three estimates no plumbing company wants to touch it. So what do I do? I need my three estimates to get this done. And nobody will give me an estimate because I don't want to deal with it. Yeah. And what they tell me is, it's a borough issue. So the borough says it's the sanitary, the sanitary says it's the borough. It's a battle between you two that the taxpayers, unfortunately, are paying for. I just put out $800 today on a new, brand new washing machine and a chest freezer, second time in five years. You know, it's getting old. I want to state one thing because I, I, you know, we saw people starting to, I'll let somebody to, else talk to get story. upset. I go on forever. Um, <laughs> and, and this isn't to sound unempathetic, but I want to clarify one thing that our engineer said. The once in a 50 year storm means, doesn't mean it's going to happen once every 50 years. It means statistically, mm -hmm. there's a 2% chance of it happening in any given year. So it could happen every year. It could happen more than once a year. That's a statistic. The fact is, the rain gauges and everything show that we got between four to six inches of rain 
inside of an hour. Storm sewers by standard, and I looked up the DEP standards. I didn't rely on the word of, of my engineer. Yet our, our, main, our designs take 1.23 inches per hour. That's the standard design according to state and other regulations. We got over four in that period of time. So what I'm trying to get across is, are our sewer systems, our storm sewers perfect? Not at all. We do need to look at them. We are working, we're actually at an audit with the DEP coming up this month. We're gonna be working with the storm, or with the sewer authority to see what their needs are. Uh, right now I understand their manager is out on some personal issues, so there's nothing we can, we can do about that, but we're gonna be working with them, with our engineer, public works, trying to get things cleaned up, trying to figure out what we need to do to, do to move forward. Can I guarantee you that all of our catch basins are perfect? I cannot, but I can say confidently that they do get cleaned regularly, they're on a cycle. They do not. They do not. I, again, respectfully, I, I would respectfully, I would like to disagree. I can't say that everyone is, but does anyone know how many catch basins there are in this municipality? They're, and I've only been here since June, so I can't even speak clearly other than the paperwork I've seen in the past. But I see the invoices, I speak to my staff, I speak to the engineer, they do get cleaned. Either way, it was four to six inches of rain. There was going to be flooding, even if they were perfectly clean and brand new based on the specs that they're designed for. I just want to make that clear. There's nothing that could have stopped the flooding. Is it possible that it could have been decreased somewhat? Yes, it's possible, but it would not have stopped it. Okay, so um, anyone else, sir? Please come up and state your name. And we don't need to repeat a lot of stuff, but, but certainly we want everyone to speak. You have something to say. Yeah, it do. doesn't have to be repetitive. Uh, Go ahead. My name is Jordan Crow. I live on 3928 Shady Avenue. Uh, first thing I want to say is thank you to the fire department. I was one of the homes that needed work intervention. Um, mm -hmm. for the fire department. <laughs> everything else, I applaud you guys and I thank you for what you do. Now I want to direct my comments to you. I've lived in this borough for five years now and you keep saying, oh, four inches of rain, four inches. Yeah, it's a lot of rain. However, if Shady Avenue floods and there's a one inch of rain on that street, and you're going to sit up here and tell us that, oh, a five year event, that's, that's BS. Because what's being done, you guys knew about that problem with Shady. It keeps flooding, it keeps happening, it keeps happening. Now this just blew it all up. And I believe you're the one who was on the media who told, oh, our systems are fine, we clean them regularly, deflect the blame because you don't want to have the borough or the public. But then, you know, you guys are up here, oh, well, they're, they're not perfect, they're not perfect, they're not perfect. And the media is fine. Now, I have probably about twenty-five, thirty-five thousand dollars $35,000 worth of damage in my house because you guys don't maintain your systems. Why should I have to pay for that? My insurance company told me to sue you guys. They said it's your issue. So I'm thinking about filing a lawsuit against both of you. Because that's BS. My one year old son couldn't stay in the house. My commissioner was probably. You're going to sue me? Hmm? Did you say me? No, you I sued me. Said, you said both of us? I said in the borough. Okay. Just, just wanted to verify what I you didn't said. Say, I didn't say I was. I'm the point insurance company recommended I'm me. I'm just to. asking. That's all. I thought you said you were going to sue the both of us. So I thought, oh, okay. I mean, I mean, if you want to, I mean, you guys are up here saying we helped you. I didn't see you out walking around seeing if we needed anything. I, I didn't there. see the mayor out there doing anything. I was there. Sir, you're wrong. I was there. Because with, it's okay. I can speak for myself. I was there. Go ahead. Keep on going. No, it's fine. I mean, the only thing I got is the, the person with disaster relief who, who was very nice. I appreciate who came out. But the borough didn't provide a dumpster to help us throw anything away. We had a special pickup for uh, everyone. We had garbage men there. We, we brought okay. everyone there to do that. But here's, here's, the, here's the issue. What are you guys going to do? Because you keep saying it's, it's not a cheap fix. I get that. It's not a cheap fix. But it's going to keep happening. And yeah, you can keep blaming that we got four inches of rain. Which we did. But she had, like I said, floods over an inch of rain. Easily. I'm not aware of it flooding. You know, maybe Kevin can tell me that, but I, I, I don't know that here. Years. Years. And out of 30 years, okay. it's flood all the time. I mean, it's, okay. this is why we're all frustrated back here. 
And you guys keep saying we're aware of the issue. Well, I think I think what you ought to do then is you ought to get involved in the in the backwater valve program and install them in your houses. Uh, are you guys okay with that? The sewer yeah. the sewer authority will help pay for it. Ninety percent of it. Okay. So, so I think, I think you should try that first. I think the borough on our hand, on our side, needs to look at the, the situation and see if there's any options that we can do. You know, obviously, yeah, I mean, obviously there's several options that we can do. I don't mean to come off, off the handle. Well, you are. So go ahead. Go ahead. I mean, did you have $30,000 damage in your home? I did not. Okay. That's I don't why live I'm on Shady Avenue. Avenue. Okay. And that's why I'm frustrated right now. I understand that. Um, but when we have the borough manager going on the media trying to deflect, that's a bad look. And so it's offering solutions to the community. I have people back here who have a lot worse damage than I do, whose medical equipment's washed away, her son, everything else going on. And you guys are just like you're trying to just sing a song and dance. No, we're not singing a song and dance. I'm, li I'm speaking with you. That's fine. I'm, 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 what do you want the borough to do? Something. I want a plan. If there's been no plan, you guys, we're going to look at it. What are you going to do? Have a new source system or something. If your home is flooded right now, what would you want the borough to do? If not, not thinking from being on the board, but like as a citizen. I mean, honestly, I hope all these people in here remember this kind of election. First time. thing I would do is I would get a backwater valve put in my home. First thing I'd do. First thing. That's the only defense you can, you can put in there. And if the sewer authority is willing to pay for it, I would get it done. They don't pay for the whole thing. They pay 90%. Come on. They'll pay 90% to get I'm too busy done. paying for everything that was damaged in my basement right now to add any more to my place. I, get with her. I understand I mean, that. I, I, you know, what? I didn't make it rain. We, we didn't make put the rain. We didn't have the sewer back up. We didn't put the sewer there. Some of the problems we're having though, when we have just an inch of rain mm -hmm. is coming from the hillside from everybody's yeah. downspout into our backyards. Yeah. Kevin, Kevin was right next door, and it was up to our ankles, in our backyard. Go ahead, Mr. Arnold. So, <clears throat> you're absolutely right, sir. Um, years ago, and maybe I can get Mr. Cannon to verify what the date was or year it was, when Alcasan made everybody put their downspouts mm -hmm. into the street. But it doesn't does it go into the street. It goes into what, Mr. Cannon? Any green space. So the issue that we're having comes from Ellsworth behind us, up on the hill, because water's obviously going to run downhill. Correct? Why did it go into a storm drain? Yeah, wasn't there a big storm drain down at the bottom to go in the, the whole system there on that street? Storm drain? There should be a big drain by Elizabeth and Shady. And down by Ellsworth and Shade, like a storm drain. The whole storm sewer system is totally. There right. is a storm drain there. Not yeah. a big long one. It oh. goes down there and flows all the way down. Do I have five minutes? To go to hold on, the hold on. He has the floor. You can speak. Five minutes. It's the system is totally. I just all I'm going to end here is because we can keep you on the line about it. We could talk online about it. Honestly, you disagree with a lot of people with me or something. Absolutely, I didn't say that. I, well, you it just, said that. I, it's just coming off that way. No, I, 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 feel, I, feel, I feel bad for the people living on Shady Avenue. Absolutely, I do. Where do we go? I mean, what do you that's do? What, that's what we're asking for. Okay. And we just, yeah, you have to have a new design. I mean, that's that's the issue. Like we're just getting like we understand it's a five-year event. Well, the engineer, has, event. The, the engineer has to look at it. We have to see what cost is available to do it. The state has to get involved in this because this is not a, this is not just something that Monhall Borough. Did you hear what the finance man said? Yep. We're going to have a hundred thousand dollars left at the end of the year. Do you think that project's going to cost more than a hundred thousand? Oh, probably. Probably. Is there probably a couple million. Here probably, can cut back on it? probably a couple million dollars. <laughs> this building you're sitting in is the reason. <laughs> money? I understand money. Well, no. Um, right now, we have a budget that's going to end with poss hopefully $100,000 that we're going to be in the good. So, if you really want to get really nasty about things, do we need to sit in a $7 million building? We should be in our old building. 
We don't need to be in this $7 million building so that run us into the ground. So why'd you move? I didn't vote on it. Okay. I was just a I, I just got into into council. He was just appointed to council. He was just voted on to council. She was just voted on to council. Because obviously you don't know. You said we're gonna make this an election issue. We, should be. we were it should be. We just were elected into this. If you would have come to the meetings a couple years ago when I tried to stop moving into this building, I couldn't do that. We tried to stop moving into this building. Seven million dollars this building cost us. We could have been spending more money on, on things. I agree hundred percent with you. That's why I'm raising my voice a little bit. I'm excited just about as much as you. I don't want to be in this building. I'm glad. All I'm saying is there needs to be a plan. And I'm gonna let this gentleman speak. But I hope you hear us. The, en hear our the engineer needs to come up with a plan and a design. And then the borough needs to figure out how we can pay to do something like that. Because obviously we don't have three million dollars to put a new storm drain in Shady Avenue. Well, I also don't have fifty grand to cover the damages of my own. I know you don't. So we're a bit of a an impasse here. Maybe. Go ahead. Go ahead. You guys can go ahead. Maybe the engineer will vote for grants or something. Of course, the borough can't afford it. Maybe the engineer can look into some grants. Hold on, Bob. Rob. Go ahead. Okay. All right. So we're trying to fix a technical problem. Okay. You can't see this here, but I'd like call to comment here. Shady Avenue is one of the lowest points in the borough. It's a bowl. Okay. That's that's the problem. Okay. So. Having the engineer work out what we do to fix the problem. It's obvious. Anyone would like to see that right there? This blue here is, is the problem. Okay? The question is, how do we fix the problem? I, I fully believe that everyone here that is saying that it has happened before it's happened before. There's no reason for me not to believe it. Okay? So Let's have the engineer figure out what it does, okay? Recognizing 50 years or, or no 50 years or 100 years, it's going to happen again, okay? It will, face it. If the, if the storm drains are designed to take 1.23 inches of water in a bowl, that's flat. And there's over Am I correct, Colin? There's 1.2 inches flat. On that. A bowl and it doesn't is worse. Just come from the back. It comes sure, that's straight what I'm down the street, every every direction it comes right. from. And it's like this. There's, there's over eight catch basins on that street. Yeah. And there was just put in right. a brand new, the big storm pipe on the end of the uh, street down there. But I, I think it, that it did nothing. We have to. We and have we have videos the of it I don't disagree sprinkling, with like a little sprinkle. And the water builds up on both sides of the street and comes down like it's a river. The street's flooded. Then. <coughs> There's no doubt. I so have videos I think of, the, I think of the the people above me. Their drains are shooting up, out of their drains, out of their. I saw the pictures. Spots. And I saw the video. So yeah, I saw. And that's just not from this one. This is just from a small rain. Why, why did she jump the head? <laughs> Come up, sir. <laughs> my, my problem. Yes. What's, what's your name, sir? Bob Fulcher. <laughs> and you're my plumber. I know. I've been, <laughs> I've been in half the houses on Shady Avenue. Yeah, by the way. <laughs> How are you? Kevin? I'm good. Okay, the problem, I know Kevin knows the problem has been going on forever. Uh, next door to me, I live at 4121. At 4119, there's been a sore line broke. And we've been breathing in sewage since last October, and uh, the tenant thought that he could fix it, and he got a backhoe and everything. Well, it's the same problem, and he was told that uh, there's a break in the line, and the sewage authority from my home agrees there's a break in the line. The problem is the owner of the building uh, is located in California, mm -hmm. RMHS. Uh, Realty Company, I think the man, his name is uh, Andrew something, Kosminski or something like that. It's irrelevant. But the problem is they need to fix that sewer. And uh, it just doesn't make any sense that the health department said it takes 30 days to, to have legal action against him. They're going to freeze all his assets. 
Apparently, he owns a lot of property in Allegheny County. They're going to freeze all his assets and, and what have you, I mean, bank accounts, whatever. And something will be done. In, 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 in retrospect, you're talking about the flood. We didn't have that problem until the gas company put the new pipelines in. I used to have a hump in front of my driveway where the water would run down the road. It would not come into the driveway because we had like a burn. little little burn. Yeah. They knocked that out. <laughs> and it comes in it, and I put in a sump pump. And it's sometimes working, but like everybody knows, that, that, that road becomes a river when it rains hard, you know. So, so we cleaned down our whole basement. So we were can, up to, can you just elaborate on what they did about taking out the home? Well, they put when, they, in when they drilled, when they put in a new pipe, uh -huh. they uh, chiseled out the concrete and uh, they put it, they made it flat. If I may, so the the issue I know that you're speaking about, about your neighbor. The sewer, I think, is terracotta piping. I don't know, but it's, the piping is the main issue. Well, the health department is involved in that. They're the they're the one they're the arm that should take care of that, and they should intercede. Right, yeah, I've been calling them for several months. And, well, uh, Ian Anderson is the, is the gentleman I've been dealing with. And he's been very good. He, his hands are tied too. He, he's trying to make this landlord respond, and he don't even show up for the magistrate. So, so anyway, I know the house. Obviously, I know the house that you're speaking of. Okay. And I did hear it because living on the street, I hear it from everybody. Okay, everybody going up the street, everybody coming down the street. It's a, it's a there is, sure there right. is, there is, there is raw sewage coming up out of that house. Right. Okay, so first off, the guy decided to go and get a backhoe and dig up his sore line it himself. Eric. Mistake yeah. number one. Right. Mistake number two, the swords that came up in his garage, he shoveled it up, put it in a wheelbarrow, went out into the street and opened up a manhole and dumped it down the manhole, which is illegal. Okay. Well, it doesn't surprise me. So I had multiple people on Shady Avenue stop me and say, Kev, what are you going to do about this? So I came down and I talked with the sewer authority. They went up, they were my right or wrong, to go up and they spoke with the, the guy who is a tenant. Obviously, it's not his responsibility. It is the management company who should be responsible for that. When the sewer authority contacted the management company, Basically, he said, go pound salt because we're not doing it. Take us to court. So the sewer authority, David, took him to the county. So now it is in the county's hands. Exactly. Okay? It's in the county's hands. But in the meantime, it'll work. Yeah. My grandkids can't so, say so, that. So here's the thing. Just like, just like uh, council president said, where do we go from here? Please, 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 somebody, I, I, I'm, I'm not an Einstein, please, somebody in the audience, please say, this is where I think you should go, or this is direction, the direction I think you should head. Okay, so, can I get a show of hands, who lives on Shady Avenue? Right? Okay, I'm going to ask you a question. Who has lived on Shady Avenue from 1977 or before? I grew up on Shady Avenue. There you go. So there's two of us. As of right now, probably you and I are probably, now the girl across the street, three of the senior homeowners on Shady Avenue. Have I seen it all? I have. Now let me go one step further. I don't know, uh, Bob, I guess you brought it up about the store, the sword down at the end, right? Yeah. So I remember when that sword backed up. This was three or four years ago. Yeah. It backed up and basically flooded the houses across the street, which is the houses beyond me. Okay? When it, that's how high it went. It actually, the flood actually reached my property. Mine. Okay? Four years. And, and now I'm a little, I'm, I apologize if I'm a little aggravated. Kevin, because, one question, one quick question. Yes. Why doesn't the borough use their plumber 
to do the repair and bill the owner. Because no. it's private property. It's private property. Yeah, but I mean, he, he's, he's violating the health clause. I mean, the health department. But that would be that would be like the borough coming in and telling you what to do with your house. So let me let me let me finish my story. So four or five years ago, when the creek, which. Again, people don't know the story behind that creek. That's not a creek. It, listen to what I'm telling you, it's not a creek. It is storm water runoff. How it became a creek is the guy who built the houses across the street from me and down to Harvey Extension was supposed to pipe that in. He went down to the city of Pittsburgh for $50, he paid the county to deem it as a creek with a name, which is Homestead Run. So, four, no. five, six, no, let me finish, please, let me finish. Four, five, six years ago, maybe more, I came to every meeting for four years, for four years, <clears throat> and I complained. Dave, you may remember, you... I complained for four years about that creek flooding. And my property, I lost 15 feet from me to you, and it dropped 20 feet. Okay, my neighbor down the street, Ron yeah. Malin, his grandfather grew up here years ago. Yeah. And he, he remembers when they had a coal mine up there where the Methodist yes. Church is. And he says that's where the runoff began. So. For four years, I went to every meeting that was it that they had at the council, yeah, and every meeting, right? I went to the residence on Shady Avenue. I didn't go up as far as you, and I said, "Would you please come to the meeting and at least stand behind me, and I'll do the talking?" Not one person. Not one person. I was there. Dave, but you came. Dave, you, you only came to one meeting. Let's be honest. Yeah. You came to one meeting. Did. I came for four years, every meeting. Not one person on Shady Avenue came and had my back. What okay. do you have to do with today? Yeah. What do to do? Wait a minute. It was brought up about the. If you would let me finish, it was brought up about the flood that the new, the new drain down there won't take the water. That drain is larger, much, much, much larger than it was before. There is now a stone retaining wall that was installed down there. And basically, up until just recently, that creek was actually cleaned out. But everybody throws crap in that creek. Oh, I know that. Yeah, me too, because it ends up on my property. So before anybody comes and, and, you, and you have every right to complain, and sir, you did not know that I lived on that street. Or did you? No, I did not. Okay. And when you made accusation that we weren't there, oh, yes, sir, we were. Oh, yes, we were. And did I suffer because of that flood? I most certainly did because the couple sitting next to you live in my house. So I did suffer. And you know where the, you know where the suffering came out? Out of my pocket. Because my insurance company won't cover a flood. Try to get insurance on something that is... Not a flood plane, sir. Try to do it. You can't do it. Insurance companies will not insure. Unaware. Yes. So, here's the question, folks. Where do we go from here? Do we put storm sores in 27 feet in diameter in hopes that it does what it's supposed to do? Well, we shouldn't have them coming down the street that high. Yeah. After an inch of rain, where it's coming down the street. That's because everybody's run off out of their houses or at the street. I agree with you. But but there again, now we're going into a county issue where the county made the decree that because everybody was running, it was so easy to run your, your, your rain gutters and stuff into the sanitary store, and Alcasan was being flooded because of rainwater. It's not a rainwater department, it's a sanitary sanitation yeah, department. But, but they had people going in the sanitation line, that's why they directed them. Then that, that's totally different. They should be directed into the storm drain, not out of the street. 
Because that's now it made everybody above us on everybody suffer sponge shading. Because they're they're re wrapping. How do you how do you how do you direct it into the storm drain? You There's some that don't have to do it. You that. send it out in the street. There's some that don't have to do it. Or they're not even properly cleaned out or they're just jammed up. They're just coming out of their top of their drain. So again, and I'm not I'm not talking out, I'm sorry folks, I'm I am i am a little I'm something? not talking out of my butt. But I get water from where you guys live, because it comes obviously it comes down shady. I get water from Superior Street. I get water from Woodhill. I get water from every house from the top of Woodhill down into my backyard that ran their rain gutters out into their backyard. That's where their water goes. Same with Superior Street. So I would probably venture to say that out of all you, my yard, I get more rainwater than any of you do. Your yard, not your house. Not your house. My what? Your yard, not your house. So anyone else like to come Our up? Are going down to Please come up. Because honestly, um, we have to let the engineer get a design on this yeah. and, and work on it. Yeah. That's the only way it's going to get a car fixed. Yeah. We know it's going to rain again. Yeah. Mr. Hanna brought that up. The engineers brought it up. It needs to look. It needs to be looked at from an engineer's point of view and see what can be done. So go ahead, man. That's kind of what I wanted to ask. Is I live on uh, my, my house is on a curve on Shady between McKinley and Carolina and um, the water comes straight down the hill and then it hits my house and my house is the barrier and then it tries to turn. There's no uh, drainage, there's nothing. The rest of the street, they got higher sidewalks. The whole entire street got sidewalks. What's your address? 4009, I got skipped. So since I don't even have the dog on sidewalk, what, the water just goes right on top of me. It's, it's just ridiculous. Then it curves and goes down and hit everybody else. I'm first. So what I don't under, understand is how did I get missed for everything? I don't, I don't have the drain. I don't have the sidewalk. I have nothing. And everyone else did. I, I don't understand that. And that's 4,009 Shady. I got you. And I, I, I think I know. You have the flat roof house? Yes, I do. I know where you live at. I just want to say something. I feel you guys' pain because all your water comes down to Ravine Street and people down there are losing their property because of storm drains. And I try to get people to talk about the storm drain down there and that creek, because they just want to call it a creek. There's nobody who wants to do anything. DEP, nobody. They don't want to do nothing. They blame it on the borough. They blame it on the state. They blame it on the county. They blame it on the engineers. It's blame, what about but it's got to get fixed. I want the state representatives and everything because there's people down there losing their property and I'm one of them. The water comes down and it goes underneath my property and it's it's washing it away. And I was told we don't know what to tell you. We can't, we don't know who who does it, who takes care of it. Well, the state of Pennsylvania has a lot of money. They I live on Ravine Street, so all the water that comes from Shady comes down to the Ravine. So the people in Ravine are feeling your pain. They feel it every time it storms. I seen refrigerators floating down the creek on Ravine Street, but we can't get no help down there either. So I feel your pain, but we all got to work together and try to figure this out and try to get this storm stuff done. Because Alpha Sand don't want it to them, but we don't want it in our houses either. Yeah. Is it like infrastructure, like for the state, like? For instance, Braddock got the bridge fixed or different yeah. things. How come we can't get yeah, things fixed? Because nobody wants to take responsibility for them. The state doesn't want to do it. The county doesn't want to do it. The engineers don't want to do it. The DEP don't want to do it. Nobody wants to do it. They want to leave it on the borough. And this borough hasn't raised taxes. The past council bragged about how they didn't raise taxes for 12 years. If this council raises taxes to where it should be, this place will be so full we wouldn't be able to sit. I know, my sister had the same now, How are we supposed to keep paying raises for people's wages, cost of everything going up, and not raise your taxes, and keep the services the same? I mean, I, I didn't know all this before I started. I learned a lot coming through here. Me too. But I'll tell you right now, the borough is struggling because of this building, and, and our president's right. <laughs> yes, I agree 100%. And the, when I went door to door, every person in this borough does not want nothing to happen to that borough building over there. But everybody wants to get rid of it. That's 
No, it's not. As long as I'm here, it's not going to happen. No, I and there's other council people who feel the same way, but we're all in the same boat. We need to try to get the state and the county mm -hmm. and the engineers mm -hmm. to do it. So and you guys got to call your representatives and help us help you. Yeah, we need your help. I know you're the ones who, who suffer from this. I wasn't here last week when that all happened. And everything I hear, my heart aches for all of you. But I'm just saying, believe us, some of us on this committee are working full time and overtime for to help you. We need your help. We need you to start calling. We need you in the And and I'm just saying, Mr. Fetterman, anybody, Mr. Davis, Mr. Costa, maybe if a lot more than one, two, three, or four people would start to call. Maybe, maybe you might get a little more attention. I don't know for sure. We've got to have some time. Yeah. You know, it's that okay. 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 Because I've been coming to every meeting since my husband was appointed to council. And this is the most people that have been at one meeting. Yep. And there's, um, out of all the meetings, the sewer authority was only represented once by, not by a member of the sewer authority, not the president or whatever with the, the same person, not the main contact. So I would suggest you go to their, look up their meetings. He said it's online when the guy was here. Go tell them and maybe, maybe their eyes would open also and say like, hey, we really do have our problem and these people really are out a lot. Because the council up here isn't against you people. Like they're not, they're not against the borough. They want to help you. But they, but everybody like sometimes one group gets pitted against the other, and and nothing gets done. So if you only come here and complain, and the sewer authority doesn't hear it, then the same thing's going to happen, and nothing will get done. So, so we don't like, have oh, representation here. We yeah, should go no, somewhere else. No, no, I'm saying you do. But if like the like these people have sewage coming up, that's the sewer authorities responsibility if I'm right right in theory yes yeah so like they should be they should be here at these meetings listening to that too and listen, they're invited and listen they're but, invited and, and, and you guys should be able to go to their meeting and, and like you know go in 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 groups like this and say hey we really have this problem just because you don't live in a an area that gets flooded, other people in the borough do. That's just on my comment. I'm not saying they don't represent you, because they, they do. A lot of it is in sewer. There's yeah. no sewer water but, that's coming out. But, it's just but it's next, still next part, next person. Please stand up. Sure. Um, Melanie Allison, 172 Roberta Drive. Um, I'm actually, I may regret saying this, but I am a city engineer in another city, in another state. I'm also a drainage engineer. Um, I, you know, absorbed all the... Did you the say your name is Melanie Anderson? Allison. Allison. Yeah. Um, so I observed a lot of these videos. I saw, you know, and I agree with the engineer and the borough manager that yes, this was an overwhelming storm. It would have flooded anyway. But I also took a look at some of these areas and I saw storm drainage grades that have grass grown out of them which means, you know, part of it may be maintenance, part of it may also be people mowing their grass clippings into these storm drains, you know, helping, not helping that maintenance problem. Um, we talked about, you know, disconnecting the roof down spouts from the sewers, putting them into the street, but you're putting a lot more water into a drainage system in the street that was not expanded to handle that water. Right. And so it's this giant interconnected puzzle. Um, I would, you know, say to everybody, it is going to take time to fix it. It is. There's a lot of moving pieces to it. But I think I would be happy to help out. 
um, you know, within reason for, for volunteering my hours. If you need another set of eyes, happy to look. If you need to brainstorm some ideas about where to find money, happy to help. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. I'd like to ask you a question. Mm -hmm. An average one inch of rainfall on an average roof, mm -hmm. gallons per minute flowing off of that roof. I would have to go get my calculator. 10,000 <laughs> 10, <laughs> gallons or more? It would depend yeah. on the size of the depends roof. Depends on the size of the roof. <laughs> yeah, it depends on the size of the roof. But yeah. one cubic foot per second of water, which in terms of a storm flow is really small, equates to about 300 gallons a minute in, you know, say a water pipe. Um, and part of the problem here is that stormwater just comes in such gigantic quantities in comparison to every other kind of liquid, you know, sewage, potable water that's, you know, coming into a house. The pipes have to be just so much bigger to accommodate what's falling out of the sky. And between two storms the other day, we got a total on one weather report I read. It was a storm in the afternoon and that storm in, later in the evening, nine and a half inches of rain. So that was more rain than we've seen here in a very long time. It would have overwhelmed the system regardless. But there are things we can do. You know, when, one of the other things the sewage authority can do is putting watertight manhole covers on those manholes so there's not water coming down in the top of sewer manholes. We have none of that. Up. We have none of that. Right. Not one. So there's a lot of things that you can do. But I also, the city that I am the city engineer for, we recently wrote a new stormwater ordinance where we deliberately said any storm sewer that handles more than 70 cubic feet a second has to be designed for a 100-year storm, not just a 10-year storm. What about the everyday rain where you only get a few inches of rain and at the flood shade avenue? Um, I mean, I think part of it is going to be looking at how that roof drainage gets into your stormwater system. There are also other things like green infrastructure, um, bioretention basins, and other things that try to uh, bring the land back to a more natural condition. I mentioned that last yeah. at, the, at the last meeting at the workshop about retention. Yeah, but, but I will, to be honest with you, I will tell you that if you already have a flooding problem, that's not going to help you that much. Mm -hmm. you got to put in an awful lot of it right. to get rid of a flooding you problem. Shit, yeah. You'd have to do the whole town. <laughs> so it's, <laughs> it, it's a good thing to do as a, as a practice, but it's not going to help your flooding problem. So, but anyway. That's all. Thank you. 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 Oh, thank you. Um, I live on Shady Avenue too. And I want to thank the fire department. Because there was, your volunteers were great. They came before it was like during when it was raining. I was standing out in the driveway, like almost in tears. <laughs> like, I didn't know what to do. And he was like, we're going to every house, we're going to every house. I want to make sure. That, and he did come back to check on everybody. So I want to. You guys did a wonderful job. You and your whole person. Yeah. Right. Okay, so we're going to move on with the rest of the meeting, if that's okay with anyone anyone else. We, we certainly, we do want to have everyone speak. So thank you all for coming. We're going to move on to the items on the agenda. You're all welcome to stay. You're welcome to stay and talk to us after, if you like. We certainly. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your time.
Second, then question. Go ahead. Motion. Motion. Second. Second. Questions? How about a vote then? All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion to accept the proposal for sports and recreation associations, associates for the rehabilitation of Vine Street Park and Troutman Street Playground with an estimated total cost of $428,435. I need a motion. Motion. I need a second. Second. Any questions? Just a comment, just a reminder, this is a matching fund. That was my comment as well. Okay. So it is a matching fund, so half of this money would be two hundred and fourteen thousand would be or yeah, would be borough money and the state would be matching that with the grant. All in favor? Aye. Approve the MO, MOU with Steel Valley School District for the provision of school resource officers for 2022 to 2023 school year. Motion. Second. Second. Questions? Questions. Sure. Uh, was the school board meeting last night? And according to their agenda, really supposed to be for council yeah, people. Oh, I'm sorry. Never yeah. Mind. yeah. The, your, your opportunity to ask questions is public comments on items for consideration. Okay. But if you want to fill us in later, you can fill us in what they say. Okay. Go ahead and vote. All in favor? Aye. Any nays? Nay. No nays. Item number 10, 5. Approve the transfer of property known as 285 West Schwab Avenue. 180-K-7 to Peter Luck for the purpose of rehabilitation of a blighted structure in the accordance with the vacant property recovery program. I need a motion. I motion. I need a second. Second. Any questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Number six, approve the appropriation of up to $7,000 for the civil service exams and processing needed to hire new police officers for the borough. Motion. Motion. Second. Second. Any questions? No questions. How about a vote? Aye. Aye. Any nays? No nays. Approve the, the appropriation of $200. $2,500 for the annual Munhall Halloween Parade. I need a motion. Motion. Need a second. I second. Any questions? Why was the number dropped down to $2,500 when they asked for more? Based on the almost unanimous conversation, 
Okay. That's where it was. Okay. I need a vote. Aye. All right. All in favor? Aye. No nays? All in favor. Approve the release of $67,000 from the fire department budget to the Munhall Fire Truck Fund. Need a motion? I motion. Second. Any questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Approval of the appropriation of no more than $7,000 to update the elevator to allow for a third floor lockout and provide locking mechanisms on the unfinished areas of the second floor of the borough building. I need a motion? Motion. Need a second? I second. All in favor? Are any questions? All in favor? Any nays? Motion is approved. Accept the winning bid for the property at 1850 West Street. The amount? The amount is $275,100. That's for the nurses building that is on this property and you get to the top next to the Blind Association. There's a small building there and you'll see the nurses building. It was put on the Munise, I think it's called the Munise bid. And by the grace of all, we've got $275,000. Need a motion? Motion. I motion. Reading. Need a second? Me. Second. Any questions? All in favor? Yes. All right. Aye. Any nays? Motion 11. Approve the placement of disabled parking in front of 612 East 9th upon the recommendation of the police department. Motion. Any questions? Any motions? Motion. Any seconds? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any questions? Moving on. Approve the placement of disabled parking in front of 4103 Harvey Avenue upon the recommendation of the police department. Motion? Motion. Second. Questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 No nays. Approve the removal of disabled parking in front of 201 East Miller upon the recommendation of the police department. Motion? Aye. Sorry. Second? Question. Question? Chief, why? The person passed away. Okay. It was seconded by Dave Youngkin. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any nays? Aye. Approve the hiring of public works employee with a salary and benefits pursuant to the collective bargaining agreement pending pre-employment background check and drug and alcohol testing of the employee 729-2022. Motion. Hold Second. on. Hold on. Name. Hold on. We need a name. Name is Jason McMichael. Okay. And do we have a, a wage or, or is that a, it's union? doesn't rate. matter. It's, it's, it gets paid from the, 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 collective, the bargain. collective bargaining agreement. Jason McMichael? Yes, sir. Okay, I need a motion. Me, thank you. Second. Thank you. Okay, uh, any questions? Question. Certainly. Are we only hiring one person? At this point, yes. Because <coughs> I think we need more than one person. Okay. To fill out the we know that. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any nays? Approve the salary of assistant. Pardon me? Are we done with that? Wow. Any public comments on the meeting? Well, I mentioned in my report at the uh, outset that uh, I drafted and we've entered into a memorandum of understanding with the police, which now officially recognizes the new assistant chief of police position within the collective bargaining unit as a managerial one unit position. The unit has agreed and signed off on it. Council needs to uh, make a motion, uh, if you wish, to approve the MOU uh, with the union uh, for the reason I stated. So I need a motion. Motion. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 
Yeah. All in favor. Do I need to sign it? Thank you. Yes, you do. Yeah, I've got a few things for you to sign, sir. Okay. All right, so. Um, Where can I ask something? Certainly. Before we go. Are we done with it? Here's a public comment. I'll just say. I had a few people ask me about the motion yeah. number four for the provision of the school resource officers. Because I understand that last night the school board did meet. And I think it would be great if everybody's on the same page as far as. We do have school resource officer parentheses S. Would you, somebody please tell me, what's, what is the MOU about? I'm going to do it with, so I can tell people. Uh, there's a state law that requires that if municipal police officers are placed in the school, at the request of the district and the school pays uh, for their salaries during that time, there has to be a written agreement between the school and the borough. This is routine. We do it every single year here and all over the county. That talks about the authority. In other words, the officers are still under the sole control of our chief and our police department and what they can do and what authority that the school has. So the state law is routine. We do it every year. So we are going to have one officer at, at the high school and one officer at park. As in the past, is that what we're I don't saying? know where they're going. I'm just telling you the We're going to have one in the high school, middle school, and we're going to rotate right now officers through park school. On a daily basis? Yes. Okay. What we talked about is during the routine, going through the borough, that an officer would stop into the school. Superintendent's aware of that. They'd stop in the school. Park. But as soon as we get our man force back up, there will be one officer designated for park and one officer designated for park. I just wanted the people to know that, okay? Because in the past we have had full time, but under the conditions right now, we need the police also in the street as well as in the school. So I just want you to do that. Okay, any other public comments? Make the motion to adjourn. So I'd just like to speak the. Um, Council, we do have an executive session we're going to meet after this meeting. It will be a short meeting. Uh, I was informed of that at the beginning of the meeting, where I would have informed everyone uh, as well. Um, please remind me that the next meeting to announce what we talked about. Um, so I have a motion to uh, for adjournment. I need a second. Any questions on that motion? Thank you all for coming. Please, everybody.